Welcome to Salesforce Security, authentication options using Salesforce profiles. Hello, my name is Steve Simpson. In a previous video, we went through the difference between authentication and authorization, and we talked about the different way you can authenticate, either as a user hitting the browser or coming in as an API user. Today, we're gonna to be focusing in on logging in as a user from a browser where Salesforce is the identity provider. And we're gonna talk about what security controls you have available. So coming in to Salesforce authentication user for a user on a browser where Salesforce is the identity provider, Salesforce will, in step one, it's gonna authenticate. Step two, pass to the session to the instance web server. And then step three, go to authorization based on that user for pages and resources. But going back to authentication, the, the credentials are stored in Salesforce where Salesforce is the IDP. Salesforce it, on the profile is where you set key elements of the authentication, such as the password policies, the login IP ranges, login hours, session settings, multi-factor, and you can even enable client-side certificates, certificate-based authentication. We'll be walking through a number of these and looking at them in a, in a sandbox. First, we're logged into a, a Salesforce org and we're gonna create a brand new profile. So we're gonna go down to profiles. We're gonna create new profile. Just for this demo, I'm gonna pull it in off the standard user profile and I'm gonna call it uh, the deluxe um, director. And we're gonna hit save. Now, let us take a look at some of the things that we can control with the Deluxe Director. What I can do is I can come down here and we're gonna go ahead and hit edit on the profile. We have all of these tabs and securities, but we're not concerned about those. What we're gonna look at is first, you can see we have the session timeout. We get to set the duration of inactivity. We can also set the session security level required at login if we need to elevate it. Then we get our password policies. User password expires, the number of passwords remembered, the minimum password length. We can even get to the different complexity requirements of the password, whether it does or doesn't have a question, maximum number of uh, invalid attempts, and a lockout period. These are important settings that you can set at the profile level. Okay. So we're gonna hit save. And then I have created a user called David Director. We're gonna edit that. And we're gonna switch that user to the Deluxe Director and hit save. So now we have that user logged in as, as there. So I'm at the Salesforce login screen for a private guest user with a different browser session, and I'm gonna be logging in as David. So when I log in, now I'm in Salesforce, and I can confirm this by David Director. So this user is now operating with that profile. What we're gonna do is we're gonna change something on the profile. We're gonna go back to the profile, and we are gonna find the user that we just created. So we can click here, find the custom profile. Here's the deluxe director. And what we're gonna do is we're going to add in an IP restriction. So I scroll to the bottom and I look for login IP ranges and I'm gonna give it 10.10.10.100, 10.10.100. And I'm gonna hit say, and then I'm gonna say it's a, it's a um, bad range or not a bad range. We'll just call this a dummy range. And then I'm gonna hit save. So now I've saved that range, gave me a little warning about not being within range, but I, I didn't hide, I didn't show that because of my IP address security. But if we scroll down here, 
we can see that we have a starting and ending IP address, which is a dummy range. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to David. I'm gonna log out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna log, try to log in again as David. So this is the same user, same password. Now what I wanna show you is that it gives you an, a generic error message even though it's an IP address problem. So that is a downside to using the IP ranges is the users do not get a clear message. And what I can do is, so I'm pasting in the, the password and you see it's not working. I'm gonna go back to the profile and I'm gonna delete the range and then I'm going to come back in again, paste the same username and password. Let's paste this in here. And it logged me in. Just needed a slight delay on the IP address restriction being removed. So we have David right here being able to be blocked by the IP range and being allowed in. Now we're going to get the same behavior if we come in and do it days of week restriction. So I'm gonna go into login hours and I'm gonna go ahead and say um, all the days 12 to one, 12 to one. So this is creating a narrow range, one hour every day, where this user, a user of this profile can log in And then I hit save. So now what I'm gonna do is that is saved. I'm gonna switch back to David. I'm gonna log out. And then I'm gonna bring in his username. And his password. And it's not letting me in, it's giving me the generic message. Again, what I can do is you'll see if I scroll down under the sysadmin, and I go down to IP hour restrictions. I'll see them here. I'm going to edit them. I'm going to clear the times. It's the only thing I'm changing. I'm going to hit save. Should may take a moment to propagate. Let's let that slide across. And now from here, David is allowed back in. So we're seeing that we can set up IP restrictions and we can set up hours of access, but they do give a generic message, which could be troublesome. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the profile, we're gonna edit it, and we're gonna enable multi-factor. So what I'm gonna do is search for multi-dash, and we're looking, not manage, multi-factor authentication for user interface logins. So I'm checking this box and then I'm gonna hit save. So what I'm doing is turning on multi-factor for this profile. Now we're gonna go back to David. We're gonna log out. We're gonna go ahead and get David's credentials again. and we're gonna log in the first time. Now, you'll notice that Salesforce has detected that this profile is enabled for multi-factor, and it's asking me to connect the Salesforce Authenticator. So in this case, I'm gonna open up the Salesforce Authenticator, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add an account and it's gonna give me two words. So it's a temporary two word phrase. I type it in and I hit connect. And now it's showing up as a connected account. And let me show this to you. So here, I, what you can, may not be able to see is I have the ability to hit the connect right here. And I'll switch back to the monitor and I'm hitting the connect button. And so now there we go. Salesforce has detected it and now let this user in. And so now this profile date is linked, this user David is linked to a profile and multi-factor authentication is enabled. So what we've seen is it's very straightforward to create a profile, 
assign a user. You can set up the password policies, the IP restrictions, so you should be careful. It's a very generic message. The same as the hours of access, very generic message. And then it's very straightforward to turn on multi-factor MFA using the standard Salesforce Authenticator. So those are standard profile security and the dials that you can do to elevate the security. Okay, uh, so I hope that was helpful. In future sessions, we'll be going deeper into more session complexities. Come back for more fun on the same bad time, the same bad channel. Thank you very much.